All right, so um, before we get started with what we're working on uh, today, I just want everybody to, to see up here what you are responsible for for Thursday, right? We're mixing up people's groups here a little bit. You won't be working with the same people every time. Um, so Mackenzie and Chase, you guys are going to be responsible for the Descartes essay. Uh, Lily, who is not going to be here, and Cindy, you guys are going to be responsible for John Locke. Um, Camby, Brian, and Xavier together will be working on William of Ockham. Um, and John Stuart Mill uh, will be covered by Caressa and Alan. Um, so <clears throat> let me run through the uh, reading questions with you quickly for next time, just to give you a little bit of a start uh, with your assigned philosopher for next time. So we're going to start with Descartes. So first, I want you to think about why Descartes begins by summarizing the gist of all of his previous work and how, this, how does this build up to the point he's trying to make. Secondly, what does Descartes mean by common sense and is it different from the way you typically understand that term? And third, how are humans and animals alike according to Descartes? In what important respect do they differ? Do they differ? And what does language have to do with this difference? So Mackenzie, you, you're writing these down? Okay, so we'll give you a minute to do that before we move on. Um, but one thing to note while he's you know, sort of taking that down is that right, today's readings were all about like being in the nature of reality, right? Trying to answer sort of that basic philosophical question, right? What is real? What exists? Um, for next time, what most of these guys are concerned with is the relationship between language and thought, right? So we start by trying to establish what exists, and then we move on to thinking about um, how that shapes language or is shaped by language, right? Got it? All right, good. So um, those of you who are working on John Locke, that's Lily and Cindy, this is what I want you thinking about. First, what does Locke mean by composition? What's the process he describes? And does it seem to relate directly to anything in Descartes' essay? Secondly, what's the relationship Locke establishes between ideas, signs, and words? And is there a familiar hierarchy represented here? Right, something you've seen before. And third, according to Locke, what faculty do humans possess that animals lack? All right, what does he think humans can do that animals can't? That's, that's okay. No, yeah, yeah, you can. You can do this however you want to do it. All right. Now, those of you who are working on William of Ockham writings on logic. First, what does Occam have to say about the relationship between universals and particulars? And how does this affect his view of language use? How, according to Occam, is the human intellect able to perceive and imagine objects in the world? And finally, how does Occam believe mental language to be related to our written language? A written language related to our mental language. Are we, am, I, am I okay to move on? Okay. Right, so last one. The Victorian utilitarian philosopher John Stuart Mill and his system of logic. First, how does Mill believe words and ideas to be related? And what, according to Mill, does an individual word stand for? What is a word a substitute for or a stand-in for? What does Mill mean when he talks about the denotation and connotation of words? Can a word have connotations but no denotations, according to Mill? 
And finally, how does Mill deal with words that only refer to a specific individual? Okay, um, so uh, before I let you sort of break into your groups and start today's work, um, I just want to talk a little bit about what you've read and what I want you to do with it. Um, so today's readings were all in the branch of philosophy that's called metaphysics. And metaphysics is really kind of the building block of all philosophical reasoning, right? Metaphysics, you know, as I noted a moment ago, is the branch of philosophy that asks the questions, right, what is real, right, what can I say exists, right? So some of the ideas that you're going to be talking about might seem a little bit sort of naive and pre-scientific. Some of them might seem a little bit confusing. Some of the terminology might get a little bit difficult as well. So um, did any of you find yourself getting hung up on uh, vocabulary words while you were reading these? Were there particular words that you guys had trouble with or trouble finding definitions for? OK. Um, two things I'm going to note here then before we sort of break you guys up. There's a tension in these, uh, the work of these four thinkers between what's called uh, philosophical idealism and materialism. Right? Does anybody understand the difference between these terms? Let me know what I, what I mean by idealism and materialism here. Exactly, yeah. A materialist thinks that what is most real, right, is the physical world. Right, what is most important is the study and categorization of objects in the physical world. So a lot of materialists work uh, using a process that's called ontology. Some of you probably ran across this word in your reading. Do you know what ontology means? Isn't it the study of um, like the human being? Uh, not so much of the human being. What ontology refers to is the study of categories of being. So an ontologist looks at objects and tries to answer the question, right, what kind of thing is this? Right. Where do I place this particular thing? What other things is it like? Now what about idealism? If a materialist is primarily focused on the physical world, thinks the physical world is what is most real and most important, then what conversely must an idealist think? Yeah. World. Yeah. Exactly. The, the, the you know th things in the mental realm that ideas, uh, mental images, are actually what is most real. All right. So these are the big ideas you're going to be working with. And look, I just want to note too because. For some, this is becoming a little bit of a problem, right? We start precisely at 9.30. I don't go back and repeat myself. Um, I'm not going to catch up somebody who consistently walks in late, right? We start at 9.30, be here at 9.30. All right, so you can go ahead and break up into your groups. Does everybody know who they're working with, remember who they're working with? All right, so go ahead, get together. And what you're going to do uh, once you're, well, I'll explain once you're with your group partner. I mean, for you, 
you're working with the, the group I assigned you last time. what they're supposed to do now for next time. All right. So you're going to have 20 minutes. And in that time, what I want you to do is explain to each other the major points of your assigned essay, right? What do you think are the most important points in the essay? Try to reach agreement on that. Work out together the definition of key terms and try to come up with an explanation as to why your philosopher's view of reality is correct even if you don't actually think it is, right? I know that some of this stuff probably sounded batshit nuts to you, right? So even if you don't actually agree that your philosopher's view of reality is correct, I want you to come up with some explanation as to why it is, right? Try to find some way to sympathize with their viewpoint. And then you're going to pick one group member present your philosopher's case. This does not let the other person off the hook. After everybody has had a chance to briefly explain their philosopher's position, you will then have another 10 minutes to refute the arguments of the others, right? Try to come up with reasons why your philosopher is right and the others are wrong. So pay close attention when other people are talking, right? And whoever did not present the case initially is going to have to do the rebuttal, right? Okay, makes sense? Everybody understand? We're all on the same page? Okay, great. So go ahead, get started. Um, I am here to answer questions. Um, I will be coming around uh, to talk with each group and you know, give you a chance to ask me anything you feel you need to ask me about this, right? Or clarify any points you think need clarifying. All right, go ahead. 